This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Dead Island Riptide. Coming up on Destructoid, we are getting a younger, sexier Batman this fall in Arkham City Origins. More Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon details have leaked and Ubisoft is still quiet on the matter. And would you pay $500 for the next Xbox? Well, would you? All that and more right now on Destructoid. Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Happy Tuesday, Max. Happy Newsday Tuesday. Yes, Newsday I'm Tuesday. I'm so glad we do a show on Tuesdays, because I can say that, and it makes me a little bit happy inside, because we get to talk about yeah. news. That's the first time you've said that. <clears throat> I'm going to say it every Tuesday. OK. Because Tuesdays are Newsdays. Go for, for instance, it. Uh, we've been hearing rumblings about a new Batman Arkham game for some time now. And today, the bat is out of the bag. Yeah? You like that, Tara? It hurts so Yeah, so ne uh, next month's Game Informer cover reveals that Batman Arkham Origins, a prequel to the previous Arkham games, as the painfully uninspired title might suggest, uh, is coming out. It's going to be following a younger Batman facing off against supervillains for the first time. Uh, the only one confirmed so far is Deathstroke, but the main plot is said to revolve around eight assassins gathering on Christmas Eve to kill off the Cape Crusader. Uh, I did a little bit of uh, basic Batman research. It's probably worth noting that the League of Shadows in Batman lore was originally called the League of Assassins, so who knows, maybe we'll see Ra's al Ghul making an appearance. Uh, and what comes as a surprise to a lot of fans, Arkham Origins is not being developed by Rocksteady, as the previous two games were. It's got WB Games Montreal taking the reins on this project, and so far their only projects are uh, Arkham City Armored Edition and Looney Tunes Scooby-Doo Universe, which I was not aware is a game. However, rest assured that the game's creative director, Eric Holmes, is no stranger to open-world superhero games, having worked on both Hulk Ultimate Destruction and the original prototype, so that's cool. Uh, we heard rumors that the next Arkham game would draw inspiration from Silver Age Batman comics of the 1950s and 60s, but uh, if this cover art is any indication, it doesn't seem like those rumors are true exactly. It seems very much just like a gritty old Batman, mm -hmm. though it's entirely possible that Rocksteady is still working on a separate Batman project of their own. Who knows? Maybe for next gen. Maybe a next-gen Silver Age game. I can dream. Uh, along with the console version, version of Arkham City Origins, the 3DS and Vita will be getting Arkham City Origins Blackgate, a 2.5D side-scroller developed by Armature Studios. Blackgate, of course, being Gotham City's prison. I don't know about you guys, but I would be very much down with a Batman Metroidvania game in a prison. Hmm. You're like Batman, but you run around and thing. Uh, anyway, Arkham Origins will be hitting 360 PS3, Wii U, and PC on October 25th, with Blackgate releasing simultaneously on 3DS oh. and Vita. That's exciting. Batman every year, every year, yeah, forever. Yeah, another year, another prequel. Yeah. Maybe they'll change his hairstyle or something, and people will get upset. What if Maybe he just they'll had give him hair on top of his on top of his yeah. cowl. That would be the worst That'd Batman. Be cute. Mm. All right. Uh, so moving on. Here's a pretty shocking piece of news, guys. Apparently, people hate EA. Like they really hate it. Oh my. For the second year in a row now, EA has been voted the worst company in America in Consumerist.com's annual public poll, beating out all of the major airlines, financial institutions, banks, phone and cable providers, big box retailers, etc., with a whopping 78% of the vote. Hell hath no fury like a <clears throat> scorned gamer, indeed. Uh, presumably because they anticipated this, EA's Peter Moore released a blog post last week calling the hate they receive undue and attributing it to homophobes who don't want gay romance options in their games. And of course, people upset with the choice of athlete on Madden NFL's box art. Editor's note, lol. Um, while this poll may seem a tad sensationalist, seeing as how it doesn't really have any bearing or effect on anything whatsoever, the consumerist seems to think that it should be taken a little bit more seriously. They wrote, quote, when we live in an era marked by massive oil spills, faulty foreclosures by bad banks, and rampant consolidation in the airline and telecom industry, what does it say about EA's business practices that so many people have for the second year in a row come out to hand it the title of worst company in America. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say it just means that a certain kind of people have way too much time on their hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who gets outraged on the internet the most yeah. easily? Have you used Bank of America? They're terrible. You know how many you know how many pelicans EA killed this year? Yeah. I don't think they killed any pelicans yeah. with oil. Just going out on a limb there, too. Maybe one. I Maybe, don't know. possibly. They probably have, like, Peter Moore's got his own yeah. private pelican that he just tortures He's got a by pelican pouring farm stuff on or something. Yeah. Anyway, uh, do, 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 do. it's time we bring you breaking news in the ever developing Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon story, the totally bodacious looking game that Ubisoft still hasn't actually confirmed in spite of the consistent stream of leaks. 
What kind of leaks, you ask? Well, how about the entire game itself, which officially does not quite exist yet. But yeah, apparently some Russian hackers managed to use a workaround on Ubisoft's Uplay service that tricked hmm. it into thinking they were the proud owners of games they hadn't purchased, including Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, a game that is not even out yet. Uh, the leak resulted in large chunks of gameplay footage turning up online, only to be quickly flagged for copyright violation, which is why you're not seeing any gameplay right now, because we don't want to get in trouble. Again, this is in spite of the fact that Ubisoft has not officially announced this game in a non-April Fool's context yet. Uh, as the game's existence on Uplay might suggest, Blood Dragon will not just be a 360 exclusive, as some of the leaked cover art sort of suggested. It looks like it'll also be coming to PSN and PC. Uh, furthermore, it seems like it'll be coming very soon, with a release date of May 1st, 2013. The cyber weasels on NeoGAF did some thorough digging and figured out that the game will also be a standalone title, not an add-on that requires Far Cry 3 to play, so there's that. Uh, it will not have any multiplayer features beyond a leaderboard. Again, I apologize for not having an actual, any actual gameplay to show you guys, we just don't want to get in trouble. Um, but if you dig around on YouTube a little bit, I'm sure you can find some gameplay that has not yet been flagged for deletion. I watched a bit of it, and it is exactly as ridiculous as we've been hoping. Uh, Michael Bean is voicing the main character, and the game looks like the disgusting love child of Terminator and a laser tag arena. Uh, the mechanics look about the same as Far Cry 3, but with little tiny differences. Um, for instance, instead of throwing a rock to distract enemies, you throw a, a d20 die, hmm. like from Dungeons & Dragons, because why not? Uh, when you're injured, instead of the animation of, you know, jamming your dislocated thumb back into its socket, your guy just pulls out one of those hand exercisers and exercises his hand. I, I don't know. It's the blood pumping. Yep, it's the blood dragon. I don't know. Yeah, Far Cry 3 blood dragon. Maybe, possibly, probably coming out for XBLA, PSN, and PC in less than a month. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Ubisoft hasn't actually said anything one way or the other. I swear to God, it is like the end of Bird After Reading with this thing. Don't spoil that movie for me. I haven't seen well, it Well, you yet. should watch movies when they come out and not get mad at spoilers two yeah. years after the fact. Um, it's interesting that they're making this a standalone title rather than a uh, yeah. DLC. It's I wonder interesting if that, that means they that haven't be announced it yet. Yes, interesting <laughs> is a good word. I guess it could be some um, crazy, some crazy like viral thing where they're just like, let's just let's just let the internet do mm -hmm. our PR for us. Let's yeah, just... or maybe it's a lot bigger than we think. Maybe. That's what she yeah. said. All right, so rumors have begun circulating that Microsoft's big Xbox reveal event, which was previously thought to be happening sometime in April, has been pushed back to May 21st. Sources are saying Microsoft will share the initial details of the console at that time and also give an outline of their strategy for Xbox in 2013. Uh, shortly before this news broke, Microsoft's Yusuf Mehdi wrote a post on the official company blog announcing that they're gonna be devoting all of their television resources to the Xbox after the acquisition of their IPTV platform, Media Room, uh, which recently was purchased by Ericsson. This basically confirms a lot of the talk we've been hearing about, about Xbox wanting to be the center of your living room, and an always online connection could easily line up with that if what we've been hearing is correct. Uh, as for hardware specs, we already know that the next Xbox is gonna use an x86 AMD chip, or at least it's a very real sounding rumor. Uh, that's similar to the one that PlayStation 4 is using, and this has a good side and a downside. Uh, the upside is that it will make it easier for developers to create and port games across multiple platforms. Uh, on the downside, it means that the next Xbox will not be backwards compatible with discs. So, does that really matter if everything's gonna be always online anyway? Do we even know if that's a thing? What do we know? You know? Do I have any more questions to ask like this? Cable boxes hands? are always online. They're gonna have an Xbox well, TV and it's always online. Telephones are always online when they're cooked up to the wall. Yes, you are correct about that. What if that? the next Xbox is just a big old telephone? What if? Like a big rotary dial phone. You have to use your connect We're to like dial modern day philosophers. We're brilliance. Philosophers. Anyway, let's, let's take a word from our sponsors. Yes. Alright, All right. so Dead Island Riptide is coming out in a couple weeks, and if you like the first game, there are plenty of reasons to check out the second one. Along with new locations, new vehicles, and a new playable character, Riptide also features the same strategic combat you come to love from the first game, with all new hub defense missions where you and up to three of your friends will be tested to the limit as you fight off hordes of oncoming zombies and try to just make it out alive. Players can either start a character from scratch or import their save games from the original Dead Island and continue developing their character with new skills to choose from and a raised level cap. More importantly, as Tara mentioned, there are new vehicles including motorboats. You can now use them to run over zombies. I repeat, 
you can motorboat zombies. Dead Island Riptide is in stores April 23rd. If you want to pre-order or learn more, just check out deadisland.com. Wow, motorboating. Huh? Motorboat them zombies. <laughs> the final frontier. All right, uh, back to the show. So Transistor is a game I know a lot of you have been curious about. This is, of course, the new game from Supergiant, the guys who made Bastion. I actually visited their studio last week and got to play the demo for myself. This was the demo that they had uh, on display at PAX East. So maybe some of you got to play that. Um, a lot of people have compared this game to Bastion just, I guess, because of the art style and the fact that it's a top-down game. Um, but the gameplay actually couldn't be more different. It's got a really interesting system in it, kind of similar to Vats in Fallout, where during combat you can sort of pause time and then strategically plot out each of your moves and then resume time, and then you see everything just blow up. It's really awesome. Uh, Anthony was actually there with me uh, playing the demo, and afterwards he did an interview with Greg Cassavin, the game's writer and director. So if you guys want to learn more about Transistor, please go visit youtube.com slash rev3games. That's where we have that interview up. Uh, also on that channel, we've got a two-part interview that Adam Sessler did with Michael Pachter, the famed industry analyst. Look Back at him there, attack. he looks like my dad. Um, they talk all about the state of AAA games, the influx of mobile games, the always online console, the PS4, everything pretty much. Uh, it's a pretty long interview, but it's worth watching. So yeah, youtube.com slash rev3games, you know where it's at. And unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today's show. If you guys want to keep up with us outside of Destructoid, go follow us on Twitter. I'm Max Scoville, she's Tara Longest, and the show is Detoid Show. We will be back here on Friday with another actually live show that is happening at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time, right here on youtube.com slash Detoid. We will see you then. We love you. Take it Brr. easy.